What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we'll be covering text, both 2D and 3D text, or model text. So you'll find 2D text in the annotation tab here, and there's a big letter A for text. And if we click on text, we are then prompted to start typing. But before we do that, where do we want the text? Well, let's just put it in the middle of the screen. Right now I will write example. And there we have our example. It's our text, it's, it is what it is. We have the great option of either before or after you type to add leaders. And leaders are simply just lines with arrows and you can have one that comes off the left, the right, just like that. You can make as many as you want. You can determine where those arrows end up and you can have them all align in the same place if you want for better organization those leader lines will respond to however you push and pull your text whether how much you have or not you can always remove those leader lines with the subtract here you can reorient where those leader lines begin from based on the text itself if you look over here there's an alignment with arrows showing the left side here says that the these leader lines will come off the top of the text. Whereas if I change this to the middle and bottom, this leader line should move and it doesn't just because there's one line. So let's go ahead and type in example text. So now we can see that these leader lines are coming from the center of like the text box, essentially. If I change this to the top, we can see those leader lines move to be oriented to the top. Whereas also the bottom, you can reorient them however you want. I typically like them in the center just because it reads a little better. You've also got some basic alignments when it comes to the text itself. You can middle align it. And this is simply based on the vertical. Like do I want all this text at the top or the bottom? Because of the type of text that it is, it's hard to tell. You can't even really see that it's doing anything. Or you could center align or write justify. You're familiar with this if you've used any kind of word processor. There's check spelling. This is great and obviously it's something you should use, but in my opinion it's very underutilized because you don't think about spell checking in Revit. If you do, that's fantastic, but I typically don't remember to do it. You, you really should, obviously. You don't want to send anything out that's official with misspelled words. You can check spelling just like that. It's going to say that it's complete. This is the only text in the model. Find and replace is nice as well. This can be found along in the text in the annotation tab, check spelling and find and replace. This is just like any other find and replace that you have ever used. It's, it's going to search for something. In this case, let's search for example. And I can use current view, entire project. I can match the case or match the whole word. None of this really matters for what I'm looking for because I'm just looking for example. And I can look through the entire project. And let's find next. Well, I've found one right here on this view, and I can change this to a different word, and I can replace it just like that. It works like any other find and replace, but just to know that it's there is important. So we've looked at getting your text there. So we have our text. Let's put this all on one line. And now I will look into the properties, some of the instance properties, some of the type properties of text itself, specifically 2D text. So when I look at the instance property, I see this is a quarter inch aerial, and this is out of the box Revit template, so there's nothing fancy about this, but it's it's just what you get. So right now I've got a quarter inch aerial and 3 30 seconds aerial. That's just referring to the scale of the text, obviously. I can also change the left attachment, the right attachment, which is actually just changing these different alignments for the leaders to start from, just like we went over a second ago. The vertical alignment, it's all the same. You can find those here. I don't necessarily end up going through and changing instance properties of text for this very reason. You can find everything that's easier to use up here at the top. So now let's go into the type properties, because this is where things get um, a little different, a little more important, and it's nice to be aware of some of these things and how you can get your text to look the way you want. First of all, color. It's color. You know, if I change this to red, it's going to show up as red. 
hit OK. There I have my red text. That's great. Very simple. Undo that. Let's go back into our type properties. Line weight. Now line weight is referring to the border. And by default, I guess out of the box, there's these don't have borders. But one way we can easily put a border on is to check this show border. So if I hit apply, I now have a border and I can change it. I'll change it to 10 so it's very obvious what's happening. But you can see the border of everything around the text that I'm showing because I have this check is now a pin weight of 10. Just to be aware of, I can't say that I've ever had to do that or never wanted to. I usually just keep it at one if I'm showing a box, but that, that's there for you. Background, this is important too. Maybe you want to see something that's behind your text in 2D. In this case, it's opaque. So opaque means that if I were to draw a wall just right here, and I put the text over, I cannot see the wall behind the text. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and change that from opaque to transparent. If I do that, now I can see beyond the text, beyond the text to the wall, and I can actually see the wall behind the text. Great. Just something to be aware of there. Go ahead and delete this wall, go back into the type properties. Leader, border offset, this is the offset or the distance from the where the start of the leader line is to the text itself. So by default it's 564. It's the only ever I think the, the only time I've ever changed this was if I really needed to squeeze some text in a detail or something like that. It was a very specific circumstance. So I, maybe I changed that to one thirty second or something. And you can see that this border becomes compressed within the text. So that's something to be aware of as well. Uh, leader arrowhead. These are all the different kinds of leader arrowheads that Revit has out of the box that you can trade out. So I can change this to a heavy end eighth inch. And you can see that the end of my leader line, the arrow, now is this heavy end. You can change it to a dot fill. Like You can do anything that you want. And honestly, you can make your own arrows and I'll save that for another video but you can you can really make anything that can serve as a leader arrowhead I tend to like to keep the default that Revit has maybe you want the filled version of that it doesn't necessarily matter so getting into the text itself so that was like the, the display of the text the text itself the font of course any font that you have on your PC you're, you can change it to that not a big deal. I like to use Arial because it's out of the box. I don't need to mess with anything. It looks fine. It's very readable. Text size, again, self-explanatory. You can change that to an inch, and it's going to be four times the size. You change it to an eighth, it'll be half the size that it once was. Tab size. This is just the distance that a tab would serve within the text itself. So if I come in here, I'll remove that that space and I'll hit tab so that tab is considered to be half an inch so if I change if I go back into type properties and change this to an inch that that distance doubled so because it doubled I created a new line and I can see that it is truly doubled because I go back here and I'll put it back at half an inches half an inch hit apply and we see that that distance is half I can't say that I've ever changed that either, just because I don't put a lot of tabs in my text. It's just just the way I work. I don't put a lot of tabs. If you do, that it's there. Use it if you'd like. Bold, self-explanatory. It bolds just like any other text. It italicized, great. Underline, great. You can also find all of these different properties actually as instance properties whenever you're editing the text itself. So when I go in to edit the text, I can see that I have bold, italicized, underline. I can even make it a subscript or superscript or change every piece of text, every letter to capitalize, which is actually really great. That's, I, think, I think that's new with 2018 or something like that. You can even add bullets, numbers, different types of letters. You can start to increase an indent there. You can increment list values. You can you can basically change the list value that you're using or starting with. All these things are actually built within the text editing itself, not the text properties or type properties of the text at all. 
And finally, the width factor. This is one more thing that I can't say I've really ever had to change, but it's, good, it's just going to change the width, the overall width of the text. And so the default width factor is one, so it's really not affecting anything. It's just kind of the default factor. But if I put, it, if I put this in half, that's, gonna, that's basically saying that the distance between all of the letters and the letters themselves is gonna be halved. So they're gonna be squeezed down. So let's hit apply and see, it does make sense. It looks like it's really compressed. It's half the width that it used to take up. It's essentially what it is. I'll put it back to one. I don't need to change it to anything else. I like it at one, so you can read it. Hit okay. So those are the 2D or just regular text type properties and what you can do with that. So I'm going to delete this now, but another part of text is model text. In the architecture tab, you'll see model text here, and you'll know it's model text because one, it says model text, but two, there's a big A, but it's also extruded, so you can see that it's model text. So as soon as I click it, I am prompted to type in my text. I'm just going to leave it at model text, hit OK, and now I'm prompted to place this text. So where do I want it? Well, I'm just going to put it in the middle of the screen for now so we can look at it. And the nice thing about model text is that it is a 3D element. It shows up in 3D. It, you can put it on different 3D faces. It has a depth. You can apply materials. You can do all kinds of things that basically that you could do with any other 3D object in Revit. You could do with model text. So when I click this, let, let's look at the instance properties here. We've got the work plane. Right now I'm on just level one out of the box template. And of course it puts it on level one. You can always change the work plane or pick a new host. Later on, we might do that. Graphics, you can see that the text itself is there. I can type it in here. I can go back in here and type in the text. You could add, you can add all kinds of lines that you want. You can make it pretty extensive. We've got the horizontal alignment that we just looked over with 2D text shown as left, center, right. It's just the same justification. Here's our material. We can start to apply a real material to this text, which is awesome the depth which is six inches if i go to 3d we can start to see those six inches come into play so there's my six inches and if i change this to a foot that's going to double and my depth of the text will be one foot put that back at half an inch i can't say that i use any of the identity data for model text and you're welcome to but it's it's just adding parameters text parameters whatever it might be to this maybe you wanted to schedule these for some reason you can add mark values and do that I'm not going to go over that in this video, it's just something you can do. But also because this is a 3D element, and it is a real element in 3D in Revit, we have the, the option of using phasing. If I look at the phasing, I see that it's new construction and it's not demolished. I can change that phasing to existing and it's going to take on all those phasing properties of existing, which is by default just graying it out. That's fantastic, it's going to schedule that way if you need it to, whatever it might be. Now let's look at the type properties. There's not a whole lot here. You, there, there's more instance properties than type properties. I've got the font. So you can change it to any font on your computer. You've got the text size, and the text size is referring directly to the height, the height of the text itself. So if I change that to four feet and hit apply, the text will become four feet high. And it's, it's not just going to change only the height of the text. It will change, one, the height, but it'll also change the width to justify and basically keep everything scaled correctly. You again also have the option of bolding and italicizing and that's really it with model text as far as what you can do with it. Of course you can always edit the text and change it to whatever you want and I just like I would with regular text with model text I I think it's important to have different types so I think there's just one by default within Revit but I, for every major property that you change within text or model text, I would highly advise that you duplicate it, rename it to something specific about that new type that you're making. So you can always keep it organized. So sh to show off a little more with this 3D text, I'm gonna put a wall in here. And just like I said before, it's a 3D element, so I can change the work plane, I can put it somewhere else. So I can edit the work plane, and right now the work plane's on level one. Let's just pick a new plane, and I'm going to put it on the top of this wall. And so now it's moved to the top of that wall. And I didn't have the option of putting it on this vertical face because the host is, I guess, 
horizontal. That's I, the best way I could put it. The host is horizontal, so it, I can't change that. Now what I can do is actually pick a new host. And instead of using a work plane, which is by default, it's gonna be horizontal, I can change it to a face. And so now I can start putting it really anywhere that I want. I can put it on any face of this wall. So I'll put it right there. And I'll go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees so we can read it. And so now we've got our model text. That looks pretty good. And it's, it's maybe it would serve as a sign or anything like that that you might use in Revit. So I sure hope you enjoy this video and learn something. If you did, please demolish that like button. That really helps me a lot. That was everything about text that you might want to know and really need to know for Revit if you're using Revit on a normal daily basis. Sure hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. That also helps me out. Hope to see you in the next video and have a wonderful day.